Across the Spider-Verse took four years and cost over a hundred million dollars to make. I'm going to show you how you can make these scenes in less than 10 minutes using the most powerful 3D software in the universe, Blender. I'm going to be using this free miles rig I found on Gumroad, so shout out to the other Sebs that made it. You can find the link to download this in the description. In this example, we're going to be animating a run and we'll start with blocking. The main poses in this are the contact, the down, the passing, the up and the second contact. I start with the feet and work my way slowly up through the rest of the body. I've got a little distracted here by the fingers, so if you're a beginner animator, I recommend closing the hand as a fist. That way, it's a lot easier to animate. Once the first pose is done, I move on to the down pose. This pose will be the lowest pose the character makes in the entire animation, so make sure that the rest of the poses follow suit. As I move on to the arms, I'm thinking about how they're going to be moving into the next pose, with one arm dragging behind and the other being the driving force in the next pose. The next is the pushing pose. In this pose, we really want to sell the energy of the character, pushing as hard as they can, moving towards the next step. The thing you want to look out for here is the extension of the pushing leg and the compression of the body or the opposing leg. You want the body to be slightly compressed compared to the up pose, which we'll be moving on to next. After that, the next pose is the up pose. As you can imagine, this is in stark contrast to the down pose and is the highest pose of the animation. We want this to be reflected mostly in the translation of the root or center of motion in the character. And the final pose is the contact pose from before, except it's mirrored. And you can easily mirror a pose in Blender by selecting all the control curves and pressing Control shift v And that's the blocking done. Time to move on to blocking plus. This is just a fancier version of blocking, where we push the poses a bit more and add in some in-between frames. The first thing to check is your arcs. You can do this in Blender by heading over to the Rig Properties tab and selecting Create Motion Path. Here we can see the position of the control as it's moving through space and we want to make sure that the path is moving in an arc. I start with the feet and smooth out any roughness I can see. After that I move up to the root and make sure the up and down motion is moving in a sort of squashed egg shape. Next is the arms. Here you can see me checking the arcs from the top view as well to make sure the animation is smooth and all angled. I also take a look at the head and neck and make sure it isn't moving forward too much. This is often a very easy mistake to make as a beginner animator. I add some overlapping action to the fingers in this part too, which to be honest I spent too much time on. After you've done with blocking plus, it's time for spline. Here's where we really get to smooth things out. I add another in-between frame between the contact and the down pose of the legs. And I also set the F-curve keyframes to vector where the foot is on the ground. This makes the motion linear as in the real world our feet move at a constant speed. I also add a slight smear frame here by translating and scaling the toe control. I think it's at this point it's starting to feel a bit spider mercy. I also add some overlap and drag to the toes which really polishes up the animation. I do the same sort of process with the other limbs in the body, smoothing out their arcs and checking for any kinks in the animation. After that the final step is polish. Now you can take as long as you like here, but if you follow the steps correctly, there really shouldn't be much left to do. The main thing I'm doing here is changing the curves and cleaning them up a bit, making them smooth and changing the interpolation type to some of them so that it can loop a bit better. And after all that, the run is done. We can now move on to smears. The smears are really easy to set up. Just create a curve and match it to the path of the thing that you want to smear. In this case, it's the hand. After that, you can add some geometry by heading over to the Curve Properties tab and under Geometry, change the extrude value. Once we have our shape, it's time to add the material. This is a really simple shader setup and consists of a noise texture controlled by a colour ramp which also controls the transparency. I'll post a screenshot of the noise setup so you can pause the video and see exactly what I'm doing. If the transparency isn't working, you want to make sure you have the blend mode set to Alpha Clip in the Material settings. I went with a Voronoi noise pattern here and it gives it more an angular shape, but you can go with a regular noise pattern and it will give you a softer look if that's what you're going for. The next step is animating the shape and to do this you need to go into the curve properties and add a keyframe to the start and end position so that it matches up with your animation. And then I do the exact same thing on the other side of the arm and you have this. The final step is adding in a background and to do this you want to add a simple plane and use a similar texture from before except without the transparency. After that, you can animate the location Y on the mapping node to make the texture move. And when you're doing this, make sure you adjust the keyframes and change its interpolation type to a vector, which gives it a constant speed. If you want, you can stop here, but if you really want that Spider-Verse look, we can move on to compositing. Here I wanted to make the classic comic panel layout, which is scattered throughout the entire film. 
Now there are a few ways you can do this, and the simplest is to render four versions of this shot with the camera at different sizes and composite them in Blender's video editor. This offers the most flexibility by far, and you can easily adjust when each panel comes into view by offsetting the clips on the X axis. I've left a template in the description below if you want to know the exact camera settings I used for each panel. And after all that, here's the finished shot. Now you could totally add more to this shot by adding a moving background, adding drop shadows to the panels, but at this point it's up to you. Please let me know what you think of this video in the comments below and let me know if you're going to try this out. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like and subscribe if you want to hear more tips about animation in Blender. And if it's vehicle animation you're interested in, make sure to check out this next video. The tips might blow your mind.